G'day there lovelies, it's Moon's Arts and Crafts. Alrighty guys, so for this first project, uh, we're going to be embroidering on a shoe. Now, the first thing you're going to need is uh, a shoe. Uh, I, I would suggest something that's kind of nice and thin, like a canvas or a skate shoe, Vans or Converse or anything that's nice and thin that a needle will be able to get through. Um, the next thing you're going to need is some embroidery thread. Uh, it doesn't, obviously doesn't matter what color, uh, but I'm using black just because it contrasts with the white of my shoe. The next thing that you're going to need is a embroidery needle. And the last thing you're going to need is a pencil. I'm going to be getting an image online, tracing it onto the shoe, and then embroidering over it. Easiest way of doing it. I would recommend looking up something like a stick and poke tattoo sort of idea, just because it's a really easy, simple sort of outline. Um, there's a couple of really cool ones out there. Doesn't really matter. You choose whatever you want to do, whatever tickles you pickle. And uh, yeah, choose it and just draw it onto. Now what I'm going to be doing is I found my image. I found the image that I want to be using. Uh, I'm going to be doing something a little cheeky, and uh, I'm going to be drawing a little middle finger just about here. Yeah, just just a nice little cheeky middle finger. Now I have absolutely no talent for drawing. It did not go to me, and it went to my brother. So bear with me. Now maybe it might have been a better idea if I used like a felt tip pen. Probably could have done it a bit better. Oh, uh, I gotta make that finger a little bit thicker, hey. There we go. I feel like that's kind of close. It's not too bad. I reckon. I guess it kind of looks like a cactus. So the way I'm gonna be doing it is I'm gonna be grabbing the string and just pulling out a generous amount. What you wanna do is you gotta start on the back side so the knot actually not on the back side, I just did it on the front side because I wasn't really thinking. The biggest trouble I'm having right now is actually just trying to be able to get the needle through because I don't have grippy enough fingers. So, we're gonna be using these, these multi-grips. So, this may make it a little bit easier just to oh, pull it through with goddamn ease. Um, yeah, I guess you'd be like, why aren't you using pliers? Because these are way bigger, and you know bigger is better. The whole idea of, being, of embroidering is you go forward one, and you go back half. So basically, it just kind of, and the way how you want to do it is because of the threads, you want to push it through, and get it through, so see how it's, I don't know if you can see, but it's going in between the thread and it's coming through. So it's kind of overlapping itself constantly and it just kind of secures it in and you're not gonna get these weird gaps where, hold up. <sighs> Look at that, money. As you can see from the prior video, uh, all a back stitch is is a stitch in which the thread is doubled back on the preceding stitch. This allows it to give it a nice clean line rather than having any gaps in between all the stitches. I am about halfway. It's not turning out too bad. Like, honestly, I was not expecting much from this because, um, well, the material is just so thick and I'm having to use these ply boys. Okay, I'm super sorry guys. So my camera actually died throughout the end part of me stitching this all together. However, it's totally fine because it now allows me to get onto the next videos a bit, little bit quicker. But this is the final product. It looks really, really good. I'm actually really happy with it, especially considering how hard and tough the canvas was. And I really did need to use those multi-grips. I would also really, really recommend getting yourself a thimble because I had a lot of, str uh, a lot of time struggling trying to put the, push the needle through the canvas. Um, the, there was a lot of strain on the embroidery thread and towards the end it did get a little bit how you going and actually on my last on my last stitch it completely cooked itself so I'm pretty happy that it was the last stitch because I wouldn't have been able to do anything literally after that but yeah so in my opinion I really like it and I'll show you how it turns out right at the end 
uh, with everything else. You. Alrighty, so for the second project of today, we're going to be making a belt. Now, the belt was, this sort of belt was the first thing I learned how to do. Um, and honestly, it is a heap of fun and you get to use it immediately. So you feel quite good about yourself right, like as soon as you finish, which is fantastic. It is really, really, really easy to make and it looks sick. Um, it's kind of like, I would say, now, depending on what type of belt buckle you get, but I think Prada has come out with a couple things that look like this, um, and Dior as well. Uh, so, don't have to spend that 300 bucks and you can just make one yourself. If you're wanting to use one that's got metal, um, I'll even leave a link in the description below uh, to just spice up your, your buckle choosing experience. Uh, but yeah, these are really easy to make, a lot of fun. One of my best mates actually showed me how to do this and it's kind of just stuck with me um, forever because once you learn how to do it, you can't forget. What you're going to need is a parachute buckle, nylon strap, uh, a meter and a half or four feet depending on where you live and you're also going to need some heavy duty thread. The heavy duty thread is great. I used to use my embroidery thread because I figured six threads equals more strength, but it doesn't and it just undoes itself over time. Especially because it does have to actually hold your pants up and you don't want it to be falling off halfway through the day and then you've just got to carry around a parachute buckle and strap all day. So make sure you get some good thread. I use white just because I like to show that I actually made it myself rather than hiding it because why bother? Um, and yeah, so that's basically all you need. It's really simple and I'll show you how to do it. You. I have already finished uh, making this belt as you can see. Works like a bloody charm. Now, I actually cheated and I used a sewing machine. So I'm going to unstitch this and show you guys how to do it without needing a sewing machine. Basically all you want to do is you're just going to go get your belt buckle. Now that's obviously going to be the front, so that's the back. So you want to go in from the front, go around and then just harbour it on the back. So all we're doing today is just stitching this part here together. Um, I, d I don't see this not working it just won't look as uh, clean and as crispy as if you used a sewing machine but honestly no one's gonna stop you on the stream and be like uh, excuse me those uh, stitches uh, they're actually not in line right so and if they do tell, tell them to speak to me and I'll, I'll sort them out for you the other thing I'm gonna do is go back over it four times now that may be super excessive but you'll be you'll be laughing if your pants fall down I'll be laughing at you when your pants fall down so just do it as many times as you reckon is probably best for yourself but that actually just took me about 10 minutes to do now on the front side it doesn't look too bad like this one here is a little bit wonky and uh, on the hidden side it looks a little bit a little bit messy now I don't even know what the right way of being it, like tying this bad boy up, but give it a little pull, see if it comes off. Guess it doesn't, so it means you're you're in goddamn business. Just tie it together, I reckon. But yeah, let's trim the excess. Snip snip. Alrighty. And there you go. Alrighty, so. Now, that's the end. It is really, really easy to do. I'm gonna snip this away, get out of here. Not today. And, I mean, if that doesn't hold your pants up, I don't know what will. When you're done, and you want to use your gorgeous, gorgeous belt, you want to put this around you, or around your waist, uh, through the pant loops. Uh, you then want to, once, once it's through, you want to go in from the front and then go in from the back, go into the back. Now, there's a front side and there's a back side and the back side has holes in it. 
well, on this one it's got holes in it, but but they they are usually fairly easy to figure out which side's the front and which side's the back. If it is on the wrong way, or you put it in the wrong way, you will realize, you will realize that when you try and pull your pants up, it undoes itself. So you you got to make sure you actually put it on the right way. So if you start yelling at me being like, my pants are falling down, mate, you've put it on the wrong way. That ain't coming off. So in this video, I was actually planning on doing three projects. However, I only had enough time to do two. So we got a belt and then we got a shoe. So it's pretty cool. I'm pretty happy how both of them turned out. Uh, I probably could have done a little bit better stitching on the belt and uh, I probably could have I'm actually stoked. I reckon this is fantastic and this worked out really, really well. So couldn't be more happy with uh, how everything went and yeah. But yeah, like, comment and subscribe. Um, I will be posting weekly. I think I might be able to do two because these videos are pretty long and I think I'm gonna start splitting them up just to create it so I just do one project per video. Let me know down in the comment section below if you guys are interested in splitting these videos up and I'll just be putting out just nice short videos. But I hope you guys really enjoyed this. It's been a lot of fun making and I've uh, really enjoyed this whole process. But yeah, I'll see you guys soon and have a sick week. Yeah.